with the Iron Lady, Martha Karua, former Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister, former Member of Parliament, Fogis Shogo, and yes, the current chairperson of NARC Kenya. Your tweets are coming in thick and fast. Which we a couple of real uh, quick tweets. The yes. Duke of Gatangashire says, Saba Saba should be a day to celebrate our forgotten Saba Saba heroes like Kenneth Matiba. And then Vic Tembu turns around and says, has Cord tried to reach out for you in inclusion in the national dialogue? Or is this just between them and Jubilee? I think when calls are made for national dialogue, those calls have not limited who can be in that dialogue. I think it will be upon the conveners of that dialogue to decide whom to include. But I would say, let them include as broadly as possible. Civil society, which include the churches and uh, the, the religious fraternity, the business community. Kenya belongs to all of us, not just to politicians. Yeah, but right now it seems like a core jubilee thing. It seems like everyone else has been left out of the, out of the equation. I would say this, that the government of the day have a greater responsibility than the opposition to facilitate for civil engagement so that we can listen to each other as we move forward. Yeah. Yes. I was talking about social media before the break, Mwashimua, and yeah. the hate on social media has gone to a whole new level, yeah. and it's split down the middle. If you're on, from this side of the country, yeah. you're defending this part of the government. If you're on this side of the country, you're defending the opposite. There's no gray. It's either black or white. Are you concerned about the hate level? I am concerned, and every Kenyan has a responsibility to try and support national cohesion and integration. But the leadership has even a greater responsibility. I have reservations about the manner in which the government of the day, the executive is carrying on, but I also have reservations about how the main opposition court is carrying on. Anybody who will stand and talk about an ethnic community occupying this and this, is actually misleading those Kenyans who will not have the time to process what has been said. Even though the administration of the day may have appointed more people from the president's community and from the vice president's community, it's not a community affair, it's an individual affair. I said in the morning, and I'll repeat here, that though President Uhuru Kenyatta is in power today. What does that have to do with the starving man in his Gatondo backyard or in any other part of Kenya? And even though the deputy president is William Ruto, does that mean it's a community affair? There will still be a starving man in his backyard. Or in, within his community. It's never a community affair. But what, what you're saying, Mwishimu, and, and, yeah. and I asked you this before the break as well, and I'm glad you, you brought that up. I yeah. can ask you this question. Are yeah. you disappointed? Is that what you're trying to say? You're disappointed? I'm very disappointed, especially in those in leadership. If you stand and tell people that this is a government of two tribes, you're actually making Kenyans have ill feelings towards one another. It's never a community affair. It's about individuals and their cronies. Even in the 24 years of the Moi rule, there were still starving people in Gatondo, in, in uh, Baringo. Even in the Kenyatta, 16 years of Kenyatta rule, there, was, there were many people who were in Gatondo. I have toured both Baringo and Gatondo, which I've had former presidents. And if you want to understand poverty, tour those two constituencies. A majority of the people are poor. So it's not a community affair. Even in Kibaki's Odaya, although the former president's constituency is much more better in terms of poverty levels than Gatondo and Baringo, mm. even in Odaya, there are still pockets of poverty. Are you going to tell that person that they had favors because Mwai Kibaki was president for 10 years? If something is good, it's likely to be good for the whole country. If it's not good, it's not good for everybody. Yeah. So there will be a starving Luo in Nyanza or even right here in Nairobi. Mm. So we shouldn't be talking about uh, tribes. It's about people and their cronies. Okay, let me ask yes. you this. Had, yeah. you, if, had you won that election in March yes. 2013, yes. how different would things be? 
they would be as different as we are different in our leadership styles and in our personalities. That will be my blanket answer because Kenyans are not entitled to second guess. I offered them what I would do during the elections. I'm not going to repeat the campaign platform here. Okay, overall, <laughs> were you disappointed in, 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 in the numbers you got? Yes, but I accepted them. In an election, there are two sides of the coin, winning or losing. You go into it knowing, and both are part of democracy. Would you do it again? Yeah, I'm not done yet, Jeff. Honestly? I'm not done yet. You're going for it again? I'm not done yet is the answer. But, uh, Moshimiwa, you know, it's such a grueling, whatever, two years of campaigning. It's, it's a headache. People lie to you. They tell you you're winning every day. And then in the end, it turns out to be a disappointment. It, 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 Just do remember that uh, I've been in four successful elections. Every time I won, somebody lost. So if I lose once, I must take it and take the lessons that go with it. Because winning and losing both have lessons. I am on sabbatical, savoring those lessons. But I'm not done yet. <laughs> not yet. Is that yes. right? Yes. Are we talking about the top seat or will you, you know, maybe, maybe Governor, Governor Karua? Why would I want governor if I didn't want it then? Ooh, you yes. go, Zion lady, you go. Yes. Mm. We have a phone call here, by the way. We have a live telephone. So, okay. by the way, the number is 0712-915-117. Mm. Yeah. We've got Silas from Umoja. Silas, you are live on JKL. Talk to me. Hello? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, Silas, thank you. I got that. Uh, Silas is saying, how do you reassure Kenyans? In Naivasha, people are, are walking around scared. They don't know what's going to happen post-Monday. And that's the general fear in many places. Silas, it's, it's up to the government of the day. It's up to the executive to reassure you and me of security. But my prediction is based on what I have seen on the previous rallies that the government resisted cord holding and which after pushing cord has held successfully mm. so i am guessing from that but it is not for me to assure you of security mm. it's the government that was elected by kenyans that must guarantee not just assure you guarantee you of security okay what about those people who are being told if you yes. go to the rally you lose your job if you go to work there might be repercussions later on being a working day let everybody make the right decision if you don't have leave from your employer and if you've not signed an off day everybody's um, grown up to make decisions for themselves maybe somebody will tell me on Monday that they want an off that's for me as the employer to negotiate with them and that's what we normally do Political parties forever hold rallies on working days. Even when I was campaigning, we held rallies on working days when there was no national holiday. People choose to come, those who are able to come. Those who are going to the office won't obviously come. Let everybody make a decision, but make the decision that serves you best. If you were president, what would you tell people the same thing? If you were president? I would tell them, yes, because people have freedom. And people have their minds and can make up their minds. You know what would happen if you're expected at work and you miss going to work. You know what would happen on a normal day. I can't make decisions for people. A president isn't there to make decisions for people. But you can caution. 
if someone is saying Monday is a national holiday, and you know it's not, you can remind Kenyans that it's not a national holiday. Yeah. But you cannot stop them from going to court's rally. There are many business people who may opt to close their businesses and go to the rally. There are people who are self-employed who may choose to devote two hours to that rally. Yeah. So you leave Kenyans to do as they please. Sure. Yes. I was talking about hate speech on social yeah. media, but yeah. it's also been translated to our leadership. Yeah. There are some leaders out there in rallies, yeah. they're literally goading, literally hating on other people. I think that the law must be applied, but applied evenly. And nobody is above the law. And I like what I'm seeing around the world. I was reading today that the former president of France, Sarkozy, mm -hmm. is in for investigations. Right. And I pray that in Kenya we will reach that threshold, that whoever you are, you must obey the law. And if you don't, the law will catch up. Yeah, with that's, you. Not, that's not going to happen in your and my lifetime because no, it's going to do. Anglo leasing happened under your watch. It didn't happen under my watch. Let's first be very careful. Let's first remember that Martha Karua was Minister for Water from January 2003 to December 2005. Okay. Angro leasing had already come up, and it's that December that John Gidongo fled to London. Okay, let me but ask But when you. I was in office and it was revealed, I applied the law. I advised the president, and for the very first time in the history of the country, ministers stepped aside to facilitate investigations. Mm -hmm. The Minister of Justice was not an investigator. So if the investigators were unable to do credible investigations, that cannot be ascribed to me. And but as far as standing aside, in accordance with the ethics, you know, Public Officers Ethics Act and the anti-corruption law, I made sure it happened and I made enemies. And now we're yeah. paying for that Anglo leasing. Yes. Literally, we're paying for it. And I resisted the settling of those debts and I think a lawyer has filed affidavits in court which show that and it was in the media. I did my part in angro leasing in trying to fight to ensure that Kenya doesn't lose. But somebody else didn't do their job. Defending the cases fell in the Attorney General's office. Unfortunately the Minister of Justice could only express policy, could not prosecute, could not defend. But I expressed displeasure in writing and within government circles no. about the way the cases were being handled. If you if you were president, president, would you have paid for this? Not at all. You wouldn't have paid? Not at all. Despite what kind of a reputation it would have rendered Kenya? No, that is in the imagination of those who choose to talk about reputation. When you are paying thugs and you know that these are people who didn't deliver, and you say that you will pay them and claim later, does it make sense? There's something not right. When President Uhuru Kenyatta was the leader of official opposition, and I was Minister for Justice, and he chaired the Public Accounts Committee and went to London, met Kidongo investigated, he came to Parliament, and on behalf of the government, I accepted, we accepted the recommendations of the Public Accounts Committee, and one of them was to investigate and to try and prevent the loss occurring from Kenyans. Why has he shifted ground? Hmm. You know? Yeah. I want to say categorically that I did my part and I paid for it by creating enemies around me. But today, I'm proud of what I did. And, yeah. and it comes back to the point you made, was yeah. the fact that no big name will yeah. ever be put in jail in our life. It's not going to happen. It's up to Kenyans. It's up to Kenyans to put leaders who can enforce the law without fear or favor. And until that person yeah. is arrested, convicted, jailed, and yeah. the key thrown away, yeah. that's when people will realize that, you know, there's no free lunches. But you know, I want Kenyans to remember, responsibility is not only on the executive. It's not only on the leaders elected to parliament. It is Kenyans who elect those leaders. And the leaders are a reflection of society. If leaders are embracing corruption, it also means society has embraced corruption. Society elects leaders sometimes, even when they know that those leaders have in the past been guilty of corrupt practices. It is up to us Kenyans to talk to each other.
to have a new conversation. What do we want of our country? What do we want of ourselves? Mm. This is the conversation we must have. Yes, the greater responsibility is with those bestowed with authority by Kenyans. But you and me have a responsibility too. So the question will be, are you doing your part? Am I doing my part? Mm. I answer yes. Speaking of doing your part, Moshimiwa, yes. the constitution you helped yeah. birth. Yeah has you know that chapter that everybody talks about but no one follows through chapter six <laughs> on leadership and integrity yes we are still putting leaders in office yeah. who have suspect backgrounds who who have backgrounds that are not clean and we know courtesy of kenyans but whose fault is it because it's in the constitution the highest court is the court of public opinion when you're through with the magistrate's court, with the high court, with the court of appeal and the supreme court, the greatest court of all is the court of public opinion. And if Kenyans feel that irrespective of the shady background of an individual, they want that individual in government, it is up to Kenyans. Are you saying we get what we deserve? Yes, yes, yes. It's always that with Jeff. Isn't that sad? It is sad and sometimes it is the suffering of society after making decisions that will make them regret it is that type of suffering that makes people to rethink and to come out of that almost shall i call it a slumber hmm. and do the right thing when are we ever gonna get past that slumber you talk about we did once in 2002 when the national rainbow coalition was overwhelmingly supported by kenya to overthrow through the ballot the Kanu regime. Kenyans did not care about money. They did not care about tribe. They acted in concert with a common intention of getting rid of the Kanu government and ushering a government they believed will bring good governance, transparency, and will work for them. And it happened halfway, but with disappointments, Kenyans went backwards. We are where we are, the things that are happening, we are suffering seriously on issues of security. There are many, many issues. We are seeing problems with the implementation of the Constitution. The quarrels between the National Land Commission and the Ministry of Lands. Those are quarrels that are suggestive. Somebody somewhere does not want full implementation. Failure to implement the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission report. Which report will help us to lay to rest the ghosts of the past? If you think your land was unfairly taken, let's talk about it. The land may not be returned, but at least some understanding will be created. Mm -hmm. Let us see a beginning of redressing or the attempt to redress historical injustices. And, and until we exorcise those ghosts? Until we exorcise those ghosts, we shall still hear those undertones of historical injustices. Yeah. And it's not just about land, it's about human rights. It's about marginalization, even in development. So until we have this conversation, call it national dialogue, call it whatever you will, until we engage each other responsibly so that we can move together, even for those in authority, for the president, his government, and the deputy, he would want to speak and a majority of Kenyans hear him. Mm -hmm. But when there is tension, those who follow the leader of the main opposition party court, if they think that there is unfairness or refusal to listen to them, that will prevent quite a number from hearing what the president says. Yeah. So let's not talk at each other. Mm. Let's talk to each other. There are areas where we need to move together in respect of our political views. Would you want to be part of that national dialogue? Would you want we, to be in there? I'm a Kenyan like you and the next person. I didn't ask you that. Would you want to be in that room? Yes, I would want to be in that room. I, and if I'm not in that room, I'll be represented. Mm, yeah. We have another phone call, Moshimu. Yes. I think it's uh, Jeff from Mombasa, you said, right? Jeff, you are live on JKL or from Kitengela. Talk to me. Yes, I'm from Kitengela. Yeah. I think what he's saying is about that's a problem that they got to be solved because we are not in the politics so far. I thought about it yesterday. I was, I was like, yes, in other media, they suppose that the dialogue can be very in a proper way. It's not a question, but that's the issue I don't suppose. And the last year, I think it's going for the 
I, I didn't hear the first part, but the second part says, why don't you know, in 2017, yeah. he would support you. You should run for the for the highest office in this land. That's what he's saying. I hear him, but today is not today, the day to make any declaration. You can tell me. I won't tell anybody. I, I promise. Have, I also won't tell anybody. What I'm saying is patience. I've already said I'm not done yet. That's enough for today. And that's enough for this part of the show. We're going to yeah. take another break. Come okay. back and talk about the way forward. Okay. For our children, what kind of country are we leaving our children? I have a six-year-old, mm -hmm. and you know, this kid is going to grow up in a really ugly Kenya, the way things are going. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that.